Testing, testing, testing.
Mosaic, hear these words that represent our purpose. The purpose of Mosaic United Methodist Church is to welcome all to experience the radical love of God as together we create a beautiful community of justice, compassion, and faith. Say it with me. We are a widening circle of all nationalities, races, classes, ages, families, gender identities and expressions, sexual orientations, abilities, and faith. Welcome to Mosaic. We welcome all, and we try to say all means all. My name is Jenny Markham Cool. Scott Spencer's not here this morning, so if you came to hear Scott, sorry. You have to come again next week. That's right. My pronouns are she and her, and I'm happy to be here with you this morning. Mosaic gladly welcomes all and acknowledges that the land on which we meet is, was, and always will be native land. This land was once inhabited by the Spiro peoples. We acknowledge those indigenous tribes to Oklahoma, the Wichitas, Caddos, Plains Apaches, and the Quapaws as the original custodians of this land in this place. We respect those who came here as a result of the Trail of Tears, the Choctaw, Cherokee, Creek, Chickasaw, and Seminole peoples. We grieve the violence done to native language, culture, and personhood. One of Mosaic's core values is reconciliation, and we embrace the ongoing work of reconciliation among all God's relations, including the 39 tribes who call this land home. If you will, let's join our hearts in prayer this day. Loving God, we are thankful to be together and for the sun, and we're thankful for the grace that you share with us so generously. Bless us with grace this day that we may go into the world with love and kindness, the love and kindness that comes from you. For we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. All right. Get it.
have our confession for today, and I will be reading here. There's a response. Oh, so sorry. There's a response, but I'll just read that part too since you don't have it. We walk in the company of women who have gone before us, mothers of the faith, both named and unnamed, testifying with ferocity and faith to the spirit of wisdom and healing. They are the judges, the prophets, the martyrs, the warriors, poets, lovers, and saints who are near to us in the shadows of awareness, in the crevice of memory, and the landscape of our dreams. We walk in the company of Deborah, who judged the Israelites with authority and strength. We walk in the company of Esther, who used her position as queen to ensure the welfare of her people. We walk in the company of those whose names have been lost in silence, who kept and cradled the wisdom of the ages. We walk in the company of the women with the flow of blood, who audaciously sought her healing and release. We walk in the company of Mary Magdalene, who wept at the empty tomb until the risen Christ appeared. We walk in the company of Phoebe, who led an early church in the empire of Rome. We walk in the company of Perta of Carthage, whose witness in the third century led her to martyrdom. We walk in the company of Saint Christina, the astonishing, who resisted death with persistence and wonder. We walk in the company of Julian Norwich, who wept at imagination and theology, proclaiming all shall be well. We walk in the company of Sojourner Truth, who stood against oppression, no, oppression, righteously declaring in 1852, ain't I a woman? We walk in the company of the, I'm sorry, of the mothers of the Plaza de Mayo, who turned their grief to strength, standing together to remember the disappeared children of war with holy indignation. We walk in the company of Alice Walker, who named the lavender hue of womanish strength. We walk in the company of you, mothers of faith, who teach us to resist evil with boldness, to lead with wisdom and healing. We walk in the company of you, O oh women, Amen. Uh, and at this time, we will invite the children to come forward for our children's moment.
enjoys knitting, crocheting, or weaving, um, they want to talk to you. And if you're just curious about what they're doing, go over and check out what they're well, doing. And we're very spontaneous, so feel free to do that. And uh, it will bring forth the kingdom you are salt for the earth oh people salt for the kingdom of god share the flavor of life oh people life in the kingdom of god Lots of palm trees, um, date palms. The dates are delicious there. Um, and then there's those sycamores. They're not like our sycamores. They're more ficus trees, and they grow kind of broad with low, thick branches. 
and it's a busy place. It's a crossroads city where the trade routes meet. And so there's a lot of business there, which makes for a certain financial opportunities that the Roman Empire likes to take advantage of. You know that uh, three-letter word? Tax? Yeah, so um, there's this guy called the Aeneas, and he's not only a tax collector, he's a chief tax collector, which means he employs other people to help bring in those taxes. So I tried to imagine him and what it's like for him and what he's like. And one of my imaginings is like this. Ha! I love my job! All right, pony up, people. It's tax time. Dig deep now. Come on, Jim Gregg. I know you've got some more. All right now. Thompson, you can do it too. I love this because I'm getting rich, rich, rich. It's like two for Rome, one for me. Two for Rome. One for me. Yeah. It's great. Now I'm getting even. So y'all remember back in school when we were kids and I was the shortest one and nobody ever picked me for the team? You remember that? And how people called me names like Shorty and Shrimp I hated that. I always swore I'd get even. I'm going to make them pay. And I am. And I'm getting rich doing it. Now, I know that cheating people is uh, wrong. And I'm not exactly anybody's friend. People kind of avoid me. They never have me over to their house. And they don't come over to mine. And they have reasons, but I just don't like to think about that very long. So one for Rome, one for me. I'm showing them, I'm making them pay, and I'm getting rich, and I love my job. But sometimes I imagine Zacchaeus a little differently, like this. I hate my job. Yeah, I know it pays well. I know it's, that's nice and all, but I hate it. I wish I could do something else. The thing is, what? I don't have the physical strength you need to haul in those heavy nets of fish. Or dig ditches. Or work at plowing and harvesting. Lord have mercy, I'm a small guy, and I don't have manual skills like those carpenters and masons, and I'm too proud to beg, but I'm good with numbers. So when Rome comes hiring tax collectors, well, yeah, I know it's time to my own people, but man, I've got a family to feed and elderly parents to take care of. So, so that's what I did. And it turns out I have administrative skills too, so now, now I'm a chief tax collector. It pays well, but it costs a lot. People assume I cheat. They resent me. They cross to the other side of the street when I'm coming by. It just leaves me feeling dirty and alone. I hate it. So that's another way to see Zacchaeus. Well, one day somebody comes up the road shouting, Jesus is coming. He's coming to Jericho. And you know that blind man that always sits by the side of the road and begs out there? Well, Jesus healed him. And now the guy can see and he's coming. That's 
that's big news. So everybody comes out of wherever they are and they line the streets to see this because the word has gotten around. And they're waiting and wondering and hoping. They're like, come by here, Jesus, come by here. Maybe we'll get to see some wonders or a healing or hear something marvelous. Wouldn't that be great? Come by here, my Lord, come by here. Everybody wants to see him. Even Zacchaeus wants to see Jesus. And he's like, Excuse me? Excuse me? Nobody let him through. says and as the Savior passed that way he looked up in the tree and he said Zacchaeus come on down because I'm going to your house today and boy Zacchaeus is pleased happy thrilled to be welcoming Jesus and how are the townspeople taking it that dirty low down son of a snake Zacchaeus what is this why is he going to his house? He's a traitor to our people. He's a cheat. I don't get this. And he's getting rich doing it. Why is Jesus going to his house? Someone's grumbling, Lord. Come by here. But Zacchaeus, he's a happy man. He can hardly believe it. For the first time in a long time, Somebody wants to be with him. Be seen with him. None other than Jesus. It is so great. Zacchaeus knows he doesn't deserve it. Hasn't earned it. But Jesus chooses him anyway. And Zacchaeus is filled with joy. Zacchaeus is so moved by this loving acceptance. He just can't keep it to himself. He's like... Lord, half my possessions, I'm giving to the poor. And if I defrauded anybody, I'll pay back four times as much. Woo! Now he's a pretty, pretty prosperous man, so this is a sweet day for the poor in town. And those he cheated, getting paid back four times as much. Dang, that's a lot. But wait, did he cheat anybody? He says, if, if I've cheated anybody. So maybe he did and maybe he didn't. I guess we'll have to hang around Jericho for a while to find out if anybody comes up with some, you know, proof they were cheated. Which makes me wonder, how many times do we make assumptions about people without really knowing? Like I've been making about Zacchaeus. Assumptions based on their occupation or their national background, race, gender, orientation, income, looks, height, weight. So much misunderstanding and pain and injustice in our world comes from our faulty assumptions, our prejudices and our blindnesses. It messes up our communities, 
our policing, and our politics. Each of us has probably experienced being the target of faulty assumptions. And it's not fun, it's unjust. And probably each of us has heard our own set of faulty assumptions about other people or groups of people that we need to let go of, turn loose of, and free of. Because all those assumptions do is fuel our racism, classism, sexism, heterosexism, etc. It puts walls between people, terrible, stubborn walls dividing us. Rome was good at holding on to power, pitting the people they oppressed against each other, stoking up hostility and fear. Oppressive regimes are like that. Sometimes they get pretty close to home. Divide and conquer. Lord, the world needs some healing. Jesus, come by here. Well, Jesus comes walking up the road to the city of Jericho, and he doesn't even have to walk around the walls blowing trumpets seven times before the walls come tumbling down. And this time it's the walls between citizens and each other, between Zacchaeus and his community. Today, salvation has come to this house, Jesus says. Salvation meaning wholeness, wellness, and well-being. What's wounded is healed. What's broken is mended. What was divided is united. Rome's systematic oppression of people and all those bonds of assumptions they're not going to have the last word. Zacchaeus is restored to community because after all, he's a son of Abraham too. He's a child of the covenant and he doesn't need to feel alone. Jesus is all about going after the lost, the ones left behind and left out and bringing them in. And here he is again. Is there someone you or I bring back, seek out, let in. Well, this is getting ahead of the story, but in the resurrection, when the disciples are walled in by their fear of what has happened and what might still happen, Jesus, whom they assume is dead, walks right into the room through the walls. They're terrified. They think they're seeing a ghost, but it turns out he's real. Should they be surprised? Doesn't Jesus slip through, walk through, break through all kinds of walls all along? Breaking down all kinds of barriers to break bread with sinners, tax collectors, harlots, Pharisees, women, men, children, fisher folk, and who knows who else. Jesus seems to really like breaking through dividing walls of hostility to bring all God's children to the welcoming table. Not even dead is going to stop him. And that's really good news. For Zacchaeus and his people and you and me, for all of us who long for and struggle toward the day when we and everyone and all creation are made whole. according to your loving kindness, 
be compassionate to us as we say together, we pray to you, O God. We pray for the whole church, all leaders and ministers, and all the holy people of God. Wash us through and through and cleanse us from our sin. We pray to you, O God. We pray for our nation, for all the nations of the earth, and for all who govern and judge. Empty us of our evil and fill us with your mercy. We pray to you, O God. We pray for those who hunger, those who thirst, those who cry out for justice, those who live under the threat of terror, and those without a place to lay their head. Make them hear of joy and gladness, that those who are broken may rejoice. We pray to you, O God. We pray for those who are ill, those in pain, those under stress, and those who are lonely. Give them the joy of your saving help, and sustain them with your bountiful spirit. We pray to you, O God. In this season of Lent, we pray for those who prepare for baptism, and we pray that we all might be given the grace and strength to repent and grow closer to you, O God. Create in us clean hearts and renew a right spirit within us. We pray to you, O God. We pray now for those people and things on our hearts and minds, either silently or aloud. faith and hope and love, we pray to you, O God. We pray for those who have died and who have entered into the land of eternal life and your abiding peace. Cast them not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from them. We pray to you, O God. Lord Jesus, you taught your disciples that unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. As we prepare our hearts to remember your death and resurrection, grant us the strength and wisdom to serve and follow you this day and always. Let us say together, Amen. Amen. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching. faces around us, for your loving, abiding presence through all time and all space. You formed us in your image and called us good. You sought us out when we were away. You brought us home to you. In the fullness of time, you came to us in Jesus, who ate with sinners, who shared good news, 
who announced that the time had come when God would save all the people. And so we remember how on that last night with his friends in the upper room, he took bread. He gave thanks. He broke the bread. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it to them and said, Drink of this, all of you. This is my life poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So in remembrance of all that you have done in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves with praise and thanksgiving, remembering Christ's gift for us. Send out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine, and make them be for us, the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his love. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Let us join together in the prayer of Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread.
thanks for this holy mystery which you've given yourself to us. Let us take whoa. Let us try to take this Holy Spirit that's flowing all around us and spread it throughout the world in kindness, in tender heartedness, and compassion. For we pray it in the one who taught us to love. Amen. By way of announcement, Carrie and Elizabeth Cleaver are here, and they are notaries. If you have a ballot, <laughs> it might be good to step into the foyer and notarize. What? Oh, yeah. If you brought a ballot and you need it notarized, they are happy to do that for you today. We also have a birthday. Calvin Kendi is here. Woo! It's Calvin's birthday this week tomorrow. Let's see, Angie's birthday's tomorrow, but we're coming to her house to say, but we'll sing to both of you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. We're not sure what that's going to be because we're kind of uh, at the mercy of the weather. So pray for good weather, and we'll continue to worship on Sunday mornings. And we're thankful to Kathy Leitner for sharing the word with us today. And Anna Faye and her, her music stand, Kay is here, and Jerry for sharing music and everyone. So Jay's going to share a bit. Receive our benediction, and if you know it by heart, feel free to do the response. I don't know it by heart, so I'm going to read from my phone. This is our church. We make it what it is. Others will feel welcomed if, if I, I am welcoming. welcoming. It will do a great work if, if I work. work. It will make generous gifts to many causes if, if I, I am a generous, generous giver of my time, talents, and treasures. It will be a sanctuary for social justice and peace if I advocate for marginalized communities and practice peace in every setting of my life. Therefore, we shall welcome all to experience the radical love of God as together we create a beautiful community of justice, compassion, and faith. And I shall dedicate myself to being all the things I want my church to be. Amen. Amen. Shalom to you now, shalom my friends, may God's full mercy bless you my friends, in all your living, and through your loving, Christ be your Oh, Shalom. 